What's that? It's been a long day, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's 11 It's 11 yeah. <laughs> we'll make it through. Yeah. <laughs> it's debatable. Okay. I know. This is uh, this is super dry material. I think. What can you do, man? But these things are important. It's going to be pharmacists. You need to know these systems, right? And, you know, basal pressing system, yeah, it's, it's important, and it's important you guys know about that. But this next system, you, you, you need to know the finer points of it, I think, because there's a lot of drugs that affect the renin and angiotensin system. So what I'm going to do now is uh, review some of the physiology of the renin angiotensin system and then go into the drugs that, that affect it. Things that you, you're, of course, going to be already hopefully familiar with, things like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, that sort of thing. Okay, Goodman and Gilman, if you want to read about this stuff. Um, oops, where am I? Uh, forgot to put the chapter in, but I'm assuming, you know, you've made it this far, you can find the chapter. <laughs> okay, what do you guys remember about the renin angiotensin system? So... I'm drinking coffee. What does coffee do? An adenosine receptor, you guys remember? Antagonist. Okay. What does adenosine do to renin release? Inhibits it. Oh, we'll see this. So, okay, so renin and angiotensin, these are super important systems. Or it, it, it's one system, sorry, that are, um, that are involved in the pathophysiology of hypertension, uh, CHF, uh, involved in myocardial infarction uh, and diabetic nephropathy. Um, it's also involved in the regulation of aldosterone secretion and plays an important role in regulating blood pressure and electrolyte balance. Okay, and if your renin angiotensin system's out of whack, your blood pressure can be out of whack and can even have things like uh, cardiac remodeling stimulated when that happens. Okay, so renin is, is, of course, the first enzyme in the renin angiotensin system. So renin uh, gets released, it's made in the kidney and released in the kidney and starts the process of angiotensin II formation. So angiotensin II being the main, um, the most active angiotensin molecule there is. So what, what uh, renin does is it cleaves angiotensinogen uh, to the decapeptide angiotensin 1, which then gets converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, if you guys are familiar with the enzyme that gets inhibited by ACE inhibitors. Um, and then angiotensin 2 is the most common active agent derived from angiotensin. I'm going to go through this whole system, this kind of summary. Uh, as is this, this slide, and if you know this slide and you walk yourself through this slide, then you'll, then you'll at least know angiotensin II synthesis, right? Um, and again, I'm going to go through each of the players in this system individually, but angiotensin, whoops, sorry, lots of technological issues today. So, where's angiotensinogen made? You guys know that one? It's on an upcoming slide, so if you cheat and look ahead, you know, but it's made in the liver, okay? So, and angiotensinogen is cleaved by renin um, to make angiotensin 1, which then is cleaved by angiotensin converting enzyme, or converted to angiotensin 2, which is the most active angiotensin. Okay. So, i um, just going to go through each of the, the main players in this system. Angiotensinogen, uh, again, this is a substrate for renin that ultimately you're going to make angiotensin with. Um, it circulates it as, uh, in the blood as a complex of angiotensinogen with other proteins. A uh, key thing to know is it's made mainly in the liver and it's pr produced constitutively, uh, although you can stimulate synthesis in, in some ways, but the kind of big point is is produced constitutively, so there's always angiotensinogen around to be cleaved by renin. What's not always around it in large quantities is, is renin. That's the thing that gets stimulated. Okay, um, and then again, angiotensinogen is what gets cleaved to angiotensin 1 by renin. Okay, um, renin is, is a super important one, the rate limiting factor in angiotensin 
two synthesis is renin production from the kidneys. So, and renin gets made in uh, granular juxtaglomerular cells uh, in the walls of the afferent arterioles that enter the glomeruli. Uh, sounds complicated, but if, if you remember your kidney, your nephron um, anatomy, you should be able to think your way right through that, right? So here we have, and I'm just now going to have a little picture of the juxtaglomerular um, apparatus as a source of renin. Um, so, so you remember glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, and et cetera. So, so this is where renin is going to be made, right? And then it's secreted into the general bloodstream, where it's going to go find angiotensinogen. Okay. Uh, there's three pathways that regulate renin secretion, and you've got to know all three pathways. I always ask a question about all three pathways. So we want to know this. And you really, really, really extra double need to know that low sodium stimulates, the low, low sodium in the blood stimulates um, renin secretion. And this is called the macula densa pathway. Okay. Uh, decreased blood pressure also stimulates renin secretion, and this is called the intrarenal baroreceptor pathway, which tells you uh, there's baroreceptor cells in the kidney that are going to send low blood pressure when they're activated, or when they're, they're positive for low blood pressure, um, renin, is gonna, renin secretion is going to be stimulated. And then also a really, another key thing and perhaps underappreciated is that stress uh, and, and epinephrine and that sort of thing will stimulate renin secretion as well. And as I'm sure you guys know, stress is very much associated, among other things, with like high blood pressure, right? And, and it, this is part of that um, pathology, right? So has anybody's blood pressure gone up since you started pharmacy school? I want to share that. <laughs> So, it'll get better, right? You have, you're halfway through, right? With your classes. So, do you guys have your halfway through party yet? It's coming. Okay, well, you need to do that. In April. <laughs> anyway, stress stimulates renin secretion, okay? And we'll go through this. Okay, um, and then, as you might suspect, in addition to sodium and blood pressure changes, uh, there are some pharmacological agents that can influence renin release, including NSAIDs. So, and we'll talk about NSAIDs, of course, more, I don't know, probably a week or two. But, you know, what, you guys know NSAIDs, one of the big actions of NSAIDs is to um, inhibit prostaglandins, right? Prostate production of prostaglandins. And again, we'll talk more about this later in a little bit in this lecture, but prostaglandins are very key in regulating, helping regulate normal kidney function. So that, that's one of the reasons you get with NSAIDs, you get kidney um, problems, is because you're not, you're, you're, you're um, stopping the production of these very important prostaglandins that, that help regulate that kidney function. Okay, uh, loop diuretics uh, also can influence for renin release. Okay, this slide um, shows the, oops, uh, the stimulation of renin secretion. So what we have here is, and you remember, renin is secreted from those juxtaglomerular cells, so the cells that are like by the glomerulus, right? Um, but, but actually what happens is to stimulate those cells to produce renin and excrete renin, um, among other things, you get the macular densa cells, so the macular densa pathway, those, those cells um, need, can be activated. So, and this is at the distal tubule. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Stress, right? What's happening to my renin secretion right now is I'm throwing things around up here and trying to keep it together. It's going up. Oh, yes. Okay, so um, macula, here's a macula densa cell at, at the distal tubule. And among other things, macula densa cell are gonna, going to um, tell the other areas of the kidney how much sodium is around, right? Because high sodium does what to renin release? It decreases it, right? 
So um, when there's low sodium around, okay, the macula, among other things, macula densa cells are going um, to respond to that and you get things like the production, production of prostaglandins, which can help stimulate an excretion. You can also get um, production of adenosine, um, which will inhibit um, renin secretion, again, an adenosine receptor uh, pathway. So, so this is one way, though, in, in particular, you get these prostaglandins. When those are produced, when there's low sodium, these cells are going to, macular dense cells are going to things produce prostaglandins. So you're going to have prostaglandin receptor activation. The prostaglandins, are, of course, are going to act in a paracrine way, right? They're going to go from this macular dense cell and float over to these dexaglomerular cells, which they can do because even though this is in the distal tubule, guys, remember the, the tubule system, the nephron's like all scrunched up around itself. So the glomerulus is, is actually close to this area, close to these macular dense cells. And so you can get this prostaglandin production here. Prostaglandins then can activate these dextroglomerular cells. You get increased cyclic AMP second messenger signaling by this pathway, which is the macular dense pathway. And um, increased cyclic AMP, among other things, is going to cause the production of the secretion of renin. Okay. Another pathway you can stimulate renin is, is by that the um, stress pathway, right? So here, when you're stressed out, right, you're, you're throwing your little pen around and you've got 100 people staring at you and you're like, oh. So <laughs> yeah, you, can, you get um, neurally mediated release of catecholamines, and norepinephrine, epinephrine gets released. These guys are going to bind beta receptors on uh, the juxtaglomerular cells, right? Beta receptors coupled to GS, right? Just like the prostaglandin receptors do. So you're, you're essentially activating the same protein. And so you also can get circulating renin secretion increased that way. And then angiotensin II can actually, it, and that's a path I'm not going to really get into, but angiotensin II can actually decrease renin secretion. Okay, and inhibitory. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the basics about renin, and I think you need to, it's something you have to look over a few times and study before I think you can totally get it. Um, so that's something definitely to study. Okay, um, ne next uh, main player in the system is angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE, which converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Uh, angiotensin converting enzyme is found in the circulation. Okay, where it's attached to membranes of the luminal surface of vascular endothelial cells. So inside blood vessels, you have angiotensin converting enzyme stuck there, okay, where it's going to find angiotensin 1 and convert it to angiotensin 2. Okay, and membrane bound ACE is, is responsible for the rap, this rapid conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So it's found you know, throughout with your vessels, your blood vessels. Okay, um, mutations of ACE genes, and this is probably becoming more important as we know more about the genetics of these systems, uh, are linked to uh, a variety of cardiovascular disorders, um, and, and in particular, if you have overexpression of angiotensin converting enzyme, you can get overproduction of angiotensin 2, and you know, your cardiovascular system will suffer. Okay, um, angiotensin 1 does have some actions on its own, but it's significantly less potent than angiotensin 2 uh, in, in stimulating things like vasoconstriction and aldosterone release. There are, there are other angiotensins out there. You should at least be aware that they exist. I'm probably not going to ask a lot of test questions or anything about angiotensin uh, 3 and angiotensin 1 through 7, but, but uh, they're also made from angiotensin 1. Uh, as is, of course, angiotensin II, and, and these guys do have some actions um, in the body, in, including the stimulation of aldosterone secretion, um, but, you know, among other things, angiotensin III is going to have less vasopressor actions than angiotensin II. Where does aldosterone get secreted from? Something you got to know. When I walk into your pharmacy three years from now, and there's nowhere to hide, I'm going to come ask this question. 
Here's how Dostrom gets recruited from. In fact, you guys should know this. Some of your physiology. Where does cortisol get secreted from? Well, the adrenal glands, yes. The adrenal glands, right? And binds aldosterone to bind mineralocorticoid receptors. Didn't you guys go over this in last semester? No. No? No. no. Acid, did, remember that? It was, no. There were like these months where there wasn't snow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, aldosterone secreted from the adrenal glands. Um, okay, and, and back to angiotensin, angiotensin 1 through 7. Again, this is another kind of angiotensin. I'm going to mainly talk, you know, and ask test questions. You got to know angiotensin 2, so we'll stick with that. So, but angiotensin 1 through 7 I can cause, among other things, aldosterone secretion. Okay, uh, this slide just shows in a, in a more complicated form from Goodman and Gilman uh, the, the synthesis of angiotensin II. Again, you want to know this system because it's so important in regulating blood pressure. It's also very important in, in things like cardio, um, heart remodeling, et cetera. If this system's overactivated, a person can have really high blood pressure, and you know, they could, among other things, you get like, things like plasminogens uh, that are activated that, that are involved in the heart muscle remodeling, which is something you don't really want. Okay, so again, we'll just go through this system. Angiotensinogen, it's in the blood all the time, and it's made constitutively, and it's made where? Angiotensinogen is made liver. in the liver. The liver, right? So, renin is made in what cells? The juxtaglomerular cells, you know, of the kidney. Um, so then renin. Um, converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, and I'm just going to stick with this particular pathway. Here, angiotensin 1 is converted by angiotensin converting enzyme to angiotensin 2. Um, okay, and that's, that's the main player that we're going to talk about here. But you should be aware that there are other angiotensin molecules out there that have a little bit different effects. Okay, um, angiotensinases are peptidases that uh, degrade and inactivate angiotensin peptides. Um, so you want know, to be aware they exist. Uh, none are going to be specific for a particular angiotensin molecule. Uh, and, but, and so there's a different bunch of different types of peptidases that can degrade um, angiotensin. You, know, you want to be aware of them because who knows, they might be a drug target. Somewhere down the line, you know, if you get something that could stimulate um, a specific peptidase to, to get rid of angiotensin too faster, you know, that might, might be a drug eventually. Okay, angiotensin receptors. Um, and, and we're almost through the physiology part and in, into in the actual drugs. But, and, and if you guys haven't noticed yet, I, I tend to spend a lot of time on how the body and, and just normal physiology and normal anatomy. Because if you don't know that, then you, you don't know how drugs work. I mean, you might know clinically, but it'll all just be magic, right? This lowers your blood pressure. Well, how? I don't know. So, so you need to know this stuff. That's why I go through it. Okay, angiotensin receptors are G-protein coupled receptors. There's two subtypes, cleverly titled angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2. The, uh, the most known angiotensin II effects are mediated by AT1. It's a bit of knowledge you want to retain. Okay, um, AT2 is around. Uh, it gets like temporarily expressed in fetal tissue, et cetera, but it's not expressed much in adults, and it, we don't really understand it very well. So, so this kind of simplifies your life a bit, though, right? Because with angiotensin, you really need to know one receptor, the angiotensin receptor. Uh, the AT1 receptor, and, and AT1 receptor, as you would expect, is going to be expressed in a lot of uh, tissues, including the cardiovascular system, and of course, the adrenal glands, where it's involved in stimulation of aldosterone. Okay, 
Uh, a key point with Andrew Tenson one, uh, I said it was going to be simple, but I guess I lied because <laughs> the physiological effects of AT1 can be fairly self-specific because uh, I brought this concept up previously in this class. You've got these receptors that they couple the G proteins, right? So if, if you kind of in your mind's eye, you think about this, there's a membrane, you've got a, a receptor like an AT1 receptor, and that's activated, but you know, a G protein will be activated if you come over there, and then if you guys remember G proteins, they dissociate and, and go, you know, subunits go do their thing, the second messenger signaling. But you want to remember, you know, they, they, they're not like married right there together in the membrane, and sometimes you'll stimulate a receptor and you can get a different G protein, right, activated. So in most cells, um, ET1 receptor activation couples to GQ proteins, right? So, and if we go through the, the basic second messenger signaling, the, the end result of that is going to be increased intracellular calcium, which does all sorts of stuff. Um, however, to complicate things, this receptor can couple to GI in some cells. Um, so, I, you know, anyway, I guess what, what this means is that you, you could get different second messenger signal, signaling stimulated by AT1 activation just depends on what cell it's at, right? And what, what G proteins, et cetera, that cell is expressing. Um, so you can get all kinds of, you can get phos, uh, PKC, phospholipase A, protein dependency, C, phospholipase A, phospholipase D, et cetera. So lots of different things could happen, okay? So, and you can also get the production of nitric oxide uh, synthase and, and nitric oxide synthesis. Um, that, that can be activated by AT1 activation. And of course, nitric oxide is super important for things like vaso relaxation, right? Do you remember the second messenger system? GM. Okay, uh, here's a simple slide that shows what happens with angiotensin 1 receptor activation. I'm just gonna um, try and point out the main thing. So, so when you got AT1 receptor activated in a cell where if you got expression of uh, GQ proteins that are going to associate it with. So you, you oh, sorry, I, I just said that wrong because this is extracellular calcium. So you get a calcium channel opened up with, with this is one possible thing that can happen. Activation of phospholipases, which is typically associated with GQ activation, uh, and along with that, you get where I was headed with my first point um, was mobilization of intracellular calcium. Um, another thing that can happen is activation of MAP kinases. Do you guys remember what MAP kinases, among other things, are involved in? I think way back. Is this biochem? I don't even know if it's biochem. MAP kinases, among other things, can be involved in growth. Okay, so, and, and I've said earlier, uh, one, of, one of the big reasons why you want your angiotensin system regulated well is because you don't want to stimulate uh, remodeling of things like heart tissue. Is linked to angio overproduction of angiotensin or overactivation of angiotensin. Um, just going through these, you know, these are all second messenger stuff. Um, so, well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you activation of um, phosphatol and not sulfoxate. That's what it is. So, the big, bigger point is you get, you get all sorts of stuff that can happen and it's cell specific. Okay, so if I bring up a specific type of cell and and in that cell, ET1 activation is coupled to GI. You know, that's something we're going to want to be aware of. But, you know, having said that, really, if you don't remember any of that stuff, um, other than if you're going to remember anything for angiotensin 1 receptor activation and second messenger signaling, you at least remember it's mostly GQ. Right? So mostly you get releasing it, um, which is other calcium. Okay, and now I'm going to um, go into the physiological effects of the, the renin angiotensin system and then the drugs that then are going to affect that. Uh, this slide is just shows, um, again, the angiotensin production. Okay. So angiotensinogen, again, is made in the liver, right? Um, renin is going to cleave it to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin converting enzyme, those enzymes are stuck on this endothelial cells, the blood vessels, right? When, when, they, when angiotensin 1 
he meets up with them, he's going to get the production of angiotensin 2, or again, you can get other angiotensin. The most important one is um, angiotensin 2. Then angiotensin 2 does a bunch of things, but and, and among them is to stimulate aldosterone secretion from, what's this right here? Extra points for anybody who gets that. That's the kidney, right? Has anybody ever pulled out an adrenal gland? Like, you know, right? They're tiny. So the adrenal glands are these little tiny things that have huge, huge impact on our normal physiology, but they're located like somewhere in this fat right above the kidney. So it's a very small um, organ, but there's a lot of stuff. So that's where aldosterone is made. That's also where this, um, cortisol is made, and that is made in the cortex of the adrenal gland. What's made in the medulla? Epinephrine, right? That's made in the adrenal medulla. And, and, and I brought this up because what stimulates renin secretion? Why, why would I bring that up? Stress. Stress, right? Stress stimulates beta receptor activation on those testicular nerves. So, okay, so a couple ways that you know the, the adrenal glands and the angiotensin system doing that. Okay. In terms of uh, physiological effects of, of this system, um, again, it plays a major role in both, both short and long-term blood pressure regulation. Uh, so, and, a, and a main job of the renin angiotensin system is to, to maintain arterial blood pressure despite fluctuating sodium intake. Okay. So, which tells you you know, this system's going to affect, among other things, sodium reabsorption at the level of the kidney. So, um, and, you know, it makes sense that over long term, sodium intake and excretion uh, must equal out. So when sodium is low, low sodium stimulates angiotensin, um, the, the renin angiotensin system, um, and that's going to cause the absorption and reabsorption of more sodium. So you remember what molecules coming from those distal convoluted tubule cells that are going to stimulate the juxtaglomerular cells to release renin? Prostaglandins, right? Okay, um, when sodium intake is high, you're going to get uh, lower uh, angiotensin, the renin angiotensin system activity, and you're going to get decreased sodium reabsorption. Okay, um, Important, relatively small increases in uh, angiotensin II levels can raise blood pressure acutely. This is another reason why you want to, the system needs to be kept in check or somebody's going to have all kinds of problems, high blood pressure, et cetera. And so um, this very rapid effect of angiotensin II is known as the, what's called the rapid presser effect. And, and what this does is it involves a, a rapid increase in total peripheral resistance. Um, and it's used to maintain arterial blood pressure when there's an acute hypotensive challenge. So, you know, somebody, you know, God forbid, has some kind of accident and they're cut and they're bleeding a lot, you're going to get a, a, a quick secretion of angiotensin 2 that's going to occur. And, and it's going to have a, this, a fairly small change in overall angiotensin 2 levels in the blood. It's actually going to have a fairly large effect um, in, at, in terms of vasculature. Um, and so, among other things, you're going to get an increase in heart rate, you're going to get uh, vasoconstriction, et cetera, things that are going to help con conserve the cardiovascular system, um, you know, conserve the amount of blood you've got. Okay, um, and then you can also get a, a, a decrease, actually, in sympathetic tone uh, that gets caused by an increase in, in arterial blood pressure, so you've got, you know, ferroreceptors, et cetera, interacting. Okay, um, so this slide, and I'll finish on this slide, uh, shows the rapid pressure effects of angiotensin two. So, so when you get an ink, so if somebody's like has some kind of issue with bleeding or whatever, uh, you can get an increase in angiotensin two production, right? That's of course, it's not going to happen. Well, it can it's semi fast, but um, you know, because you got to go through the whole renin system as well, but. But when you do get this increase in angiotensin II, this, this can occur relatively quickly. You get, you get altered peripheral resistance, and among other things, you get 
uh, direct vasoconstriction, so N to the tenth to the vasoconstrictor, which you think, okay, well, AT1 receptors are found on the vascular smooth muscle and they couple the TQ, so it's going to have a, a vasoconstrictor action. Uh, you can also get this uh, enhancement of peripheral norepinephrine nerve neurotransmission, which, you know, the overriding effect of norepinephrine, remember, on the vasculature on blood vessels is going to be constriction, and that's through which receptor? Which adrenergic receptor, remember? Yeah. They had to know this like a week ago. Alpha 1, a couple of TTQ. Okay, uh, then, then you also get decreased uh, norepinephrine reuptake, which is when you get increased availability of norepinephrine. Uh, when, when that's happening in the vasculature, you get vasoconstriction. Um, and as I said, increased uh, vascular responsiveness. Um, you can get alterations, and it's, this is kind of complicated, but you can get some increase in sympathetic <coughs> discharge from the CNS. You can get mod modulated to some at other levels. Increased uh, release of catecholamines from the adrenal medulla. Um, and, but the big result then is the rapid pressure effect. So you're essentially the cardiovascular system is trying to keep itself intact by, by losing too much blood volume. Okay? And so, and I have here, this stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. But you're all professionals at the sympathetic nervous system now, right? Okay, and I'm sorry, I'll finish with that. I hope we have class on Monday. If you don't, we'll figure something out. Okay, thanks for your attention. And we'll get to the drugs on Monday or Wednesday. Don't worry.